the Global Cross-Border Privacy Rules Forum, we're going to abbreviate that to CBPR, but that's what that stands for. It's Cross-Border Privacy Rules. Uh, and we're primarily talking here about data transfers. And so the Global Cross-Border Privacy Rules Forum started in 2022, and it grew out of a previous uh, program, which is known as APEC, right? So APEC, the bigger organization, is a, a gathering of 20, 21 countries or economies whose goal is really to promote trade and remove barriers to economic growth. And one of those, you know, potential barriers to economic growth is uh, under the category of data privacy, right? Because transferring data across international borders, unlike goods, right, can be done very easily. It can be done instantaneously. And sometimes it can be done really without even uh, knowing that it's happening. And also because of the rules around data privacy, uh, with all of these different economies having uh, different uh, sets of rules, uh, it creates difficulties for transferring and moving that data. So this is one of the areas where they focused and they created the APEC privacy framework. And so APEC itself is touches four different continents. It's, uh, you know, Asia, Australia, North America, uh, and South America. So that whole Pacific Rim, which is also the ring of fire for geology uh, nerds out there. So covers those sort of four quadrants. And the way that it was set up is these economies could join this CBPR system, right? And sort of agreeing that for the countries that join, when companies are certified to that, they can then transfer that data in and around those countries. So that's great. Uh, great idea behind it. Great intentions. However, you'll see all this gray area or all the countries that don't participate in that and can't because they're not part of APEC. And so what started to happen is some countries outside of that region said, started to recognize it as an adequate system, even though they weren't members, they said, well, if you have that certification, we will still recognize it because those principles either align with our, our country's law, et cetera. And so that continued to happen. And, and really there was a need for an expansion of this program, which is what led to this APEC system being expanded uh, to the global CBPR forum. And so the, the global CBPR system, global CBPR forum uh, now is this transfer mechanism or this transfer tool that companies can use to transfer data eventually beyond just the, the countries that were joining in the APEC system uh, to countries in other continents as well. Uh, and so there's two sort of versions of this certification. There is the cross-border privacy rules certification. And then there is the PRP, which is privacy recognition for processors. I'm going to talk about that one first. So that one is primarily for data processors or personal information processors. And it is focused on sort of the requirements and obligations when a company is acting in that role. Uh, and so that can be used to share with data controllers that they're working with to demonstrate that they have all the sort of security and accountability measures in place to be a good data processor, a responsible data processor uh, in this context. And the CBPR system is a little broader. It covers uh, various types of data sets, right? And, and cover employee data, customer data, or frankly, just other types of data, maybe clinical trial data, et cetera. And so uh, that uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the principles and things of that, but those are the two systems. This is how the system, the global CBPR forum came together. And let's talk about what they've been working on. So the Global Forum Assembly is the body that oversees the Global Forum, and they have a few objectives. One is to administer this uh, system of certifications that maybe some of you participate in, but some other objectives are facilitating that free flow of data. This group of, of countries that participate and even those that don't meet regularly uh, to sort of discuss this and 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 collaborate. They provide a forum to share best practices and promote cooperation amongst each other and other countries. And then pursuing interoperability, right? Because, because there's so many privacy laws, there's so many privacy frameworks, this is really key and beneficial to not only governments, not only enforcement agents, but to companies and to individuals as well, right? Interoperability is really beneficial. 
some of their strategic goals that they're working on. So they started in 2022 and they've been doing a lot since then. So first it's just operationalizing, which they've been doing that over the last two years. And so we'll be seeing the launch of these certifications soon. The other thing they've been doing is uh, prolifically, I would say, is promoting membership. And that is membership of other countries. So they are actively going out and providing information to other countries to share with them, you know, what the what the goals they have are, why other countries should join, how they can join, things like that. So I, I cut and pasted there from their uh, strategic goals there. They hold a number of workshops, et cetera. And then, of course, the last is just to continue to develop and enhance the, the system, right? So right now, the global forum, the, the framework it's based on is identical to the APEC privacy framework. So that APEC CBPR system, they identically align right now. But that is like not always going to be the case, right? It, it's likely that the global forum uh, may evolve beyond that.